Hey everybody, John Peterson here from John Peterson Photography and in today's video I'm going to walk you through my initial setup of my Fujifilm X-T5 that just showed up yesterday. Whenever a new camera comes in I go through and do a little bit of basic setup to get it operating the way I want it to operate. Now the things that I set and the way I do things are not necessarily the way you should. Uh, I really encourage you to experiment and do as much as you want with your own customization. For me, I, um, I tend to do a little bit of a blend of trying to keep a lot of the factory settings, not overcomplicating my life, especially when I get a new camera. And then as I become more familiar with it, as I encounter different shooting situations, I will then dive into further and further and further customization. But there are some basic things that I do right out of the box, you know, file format, touch shooting, um, color space, all of those types of things that I set up initially in my camera to get it at least functioning the way I typically operate and the way I've operated the, the rest of my Fujifilm cameras. So take a look at this. And if you have any comments, let me know in the, in the comments below. Subscribe, like, do all that kind of good stuff. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's jump into some of the initial settings right when you power on your new Fujifilm X-T5. So this is, I'll go through part of the setup menu here for you. So for me, I speak English. Um, what I want to do first is set my image quality. I'll usually go in here and do this first. Yes, I want to stay with 3x2 format. And my image quality, I will set to fine and raw. And what I do is I have my JPEGs written to card number two and my raw files written to card number one. That way I can keep both of them separate and uh, in shooting uh, JPEGs, I can uh, take advantage of Fujifilm's film simulations, which is awesome. So from that, I'll come down here and I'll select what type of JPEG, whether it's JPEG or, or the HEIF, which is a high efficiency image format. I will typically go with JPEG just because it's uh, a little bit more of a universal file format. Uh, film simulations, I'll talk about that later, but I'll keep that as standard. Keep everything in here standard. Um, one thing I do do, and this is where I differ from other photographers, I will shoot at a particular consistent color temperature. That way I get consistent colors when I bring everything into my uh, post-processing software. Um, there's times where I will change to daylight and cloudy, um, but for the most part, I tend to stick with one color temperature for my white balance because I can always adjust it in post um, when, I'm, when I'm working on the RAW files. JPEGs, of course, um, you really can't and shouldn't uh, try to adjust the, the white balance in post because it'll really screw up the file. Um, I'll keep the dynamic range at the factory settings. We'll come down here, leave everything the way it is. I'll typically leave long exposure on. Coming from the factory, the color space is set to sRGB. And what I will do is change my color space to Adobe RGB. And that's about it for the first image quality settings. In the, in the uh, autofocus, manual focus, I will come in here and make a few basic changes to uh, some of the factory settings. Um, and I'll talk about uh, different focus modes in the future. And I, I'll typically set those when I'm on location. But what I will do is come in when, from the factory, it, it's the focus points is set at 117. I'll come in here and change that to 425 just to give me more focus points. Uh, I'll leave everything typically on the first 
two or three um, unchanged. The autofocus manual focus, when it comes from the factory, is off. I will switch it to on. I will go ahead and set my manual focused assist to peak highlights. This is what I like. And then I will choose the red color, either red high or white high for my focus peaking illumination. All right, on the last page of the AFMF menu, there are two things that I typically adjust. One of them is the depth of field scale. When it comes from the factory, it's set on pixel basis. And what I will tend to do is uh, change it to film format basis because, you know, this is photography. And then lastly, I do not like the touch screen on any camera. It's not, not this is not Fujifilm specific. I am not a touchscreen fan. This is not a telephone for me. And I tend to use the buttons and the command dials and all the function buttons and the shutter button and all that kind of good stuff. So I turn my screen mode off. Because what happens is, you know, when you're out in the field and you're not really paying attention, you can inadvertently change your focus point. So I know some people um, will set this to autofocus. And, and what I've, I've tried that in the past, and what happens is I will sometimes in, inadvertently touch my screen and it changes my focus point. So then I have to recompose and refocus and get all that stuff done. Um, and the same with shooting. I mean, I've taken so many, uh, so many images that I didn't mean to just by pointing and touching at my screen. So I tend to turn the touch screen off. And then most everything else in here I will leave unchanged for now. Again, this is just basic camera setup. Most everything in here is, uh, I'm gonna leave as factory standard for now. Um, I will go in and change some of these as I get on location and want to do uh, a particular type of shoot. But I'll leave these kind of unchanged for now. In the movie mode, I will go ahead and set this to 4K 29.97 frames per second, which I like. And then in the user settings, of course, um, I will go ahead and set the area. Uh, the area is kind of cool where as you toggle the D-pad left and right, it'll pick different cities around the world. And I want to go ahead and set... Um, because I'm on the West Coast, I'll set this to Los Angeles and Vancouver. I'll go in and set the date and time, of course. Time difference, um, you can either display the local time or your home time. And I, just to keep things consistent, I will keep it at home because that's what I like. And I'll talk about my menu settings here in a little bit. Uh, there's nothing there on that page that I want to deal with. So sound setup, I will tweak that as I, as I go along setting up the camera. Um, but it's not one of the critical things that I deal with right off the bat. I will go to um, save data setup. And I will go into card slot settings. And I will go down and I will choose separate. And what it, you can see the menu right down here. It says record raw file on slot one, record JPEG on slot two. That is what I like. And that is the way I want to shoot. Um, just for f fun and giggles, I will go in and enter uh, copyright information that gets written as uh, some metadata for each of the files. So. You know, you can see I've already done it here. I've got the author's name and then the copyright info is my business name. So I've got that already set. Um, uh, you know, you can tweak power management, but for the most part, it's uh, right out of the box. It's fine for me. Uh, button dial settings, we'll get into this here in a little bit. This is a really complex area of setup where you can um, adjust all the, f all the function buttons and what they do. I tend to not get too complicated, but what I will do is I'll typically customize the Q menu up here and I'll customize the D-pad down here. And so I'll do that in future videos. 
Um, but I don't screw around with the function buttons all that much because uh, I just kind of like the way it comes from the factory. So, oh, and then screen setup is one of the last ones that I'll do. I will, uh, I think from the factory it comes at the EVF brightness. So up here, it'll come at auto plus one, which is, which is fine for me. What I will do is come in and go to the LCD brightness and I'll go up by one because uh, that's what I like. I will, I will tend to keep everything else pretty flat from a color perspective um, and not adjust any of these things. Um, I will go tweak the, the framing guidelines. I like the 9, the 3x3 three three grids uh, for how things get framed up. Uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to uh, have the, the playback auto-rotate or not as you rotate the camera from landscape to portrait. I'll go in and set the focus scale to feet because uh, we're in America and unfortunately we still use feet. Everything else in this menu I will typically leave alone for now. All right, so there you go. There are my initial settings for my new uh, Fujifilm X-T5 camera. Um, I'm gonna, there's so much more that this camera can do and it can really customize itself or you can customize it for your particular shooting preference. My settings and my preferences may not work for you, but they do work for me. So that's the beauty of this thing is so customizable. So stay tuned for more videos on setting this thing up and operating it. And I hope you're uh, having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.